educators, dedicated staff, and most importantly, the bright and promising students of Honeyland Schools in Lagos. Good afternoon, and I welcome to this great gathering where we join forces to address one of the most pressing issues facing our youth today, that is the dangers of drug abuse. As the host and principal of this esteemed institution, it is both an honor and a responsibility to stand before you today. I am humbled by the presence of our esteemed guests who have taken the time out of their busy schedules to join us in this crucial endeavor. I would like to extend a warm welcome to pharmacist Adira Yo Oshoyemi, representing the Lagos State Ministry of Health, whose support and dedication to the well-being of our community are truly commendable. We are grateful for your presence here today, ma'am. Additionally, I want to recognize our year nine students who have taken up, taken up the responsibility as co-convenors of this event. Your dedication, enthusiasm, and commitment to spreading awareness about the dangers of drug abuse are truly commendable. You are setting an example for your peers and showing that young individuals have the power to make a difference. I applaud your efforts and encourage you to continue championing this cause. As we gather here today, let us remember that we are not alone in this fight against drug abuse. Our government has recognized the urgency of this issue and has included sensitization against drug abuse in our curriculum. Together let, us work hand in, together, let us work hand in hand, supporting one another, sharing our knowledge and experiences, and finding innovative solutions to combat drug abuse in our society. Today's gathering serves as a platform for learning, sharing, and inspiring change. It is my hope that the insights and discussion that will take place here today we empower us all to take action. Remember, the message we spread here will improve far beyond the confines of this school. We have the power to make a difference, not only in our community, but also in the lives of countless individuals worldwide. Let us pledge to stand together, to be vigilant, and to extend our support to those who need it. Together, we can create a brighter, drug-free future for our youth where their destinies remain untarnished and their purpose for living is actualized. Once again, I welcome everyone to this great occasion. I encourage you to please relax and get the best out of this program. Thank you and God bless you.
Two, half C counselors. People like Miss Tommy can help you get out of depression if you are feeling depressed. Do not take drugs. It is not the way out. Three, we have knowing the dangers of drug abuse. If you know the dangers of drug abuse, nobody can tell you it's something cool and you believe it. Four, we have more enlightenment programs like this to enlighten the public about drug abuse and its dangers. The consequences of drug abuse, it can, it can affect your education, your physical health, your mental health, your family, and most importantly, your life. I assure me, I work with Lagos State um, Ministry of Health. So, um, I'll be having a lecture with you, the topic on drug and substance abuse. I'm sure if I ask everyone here, even with what she said, the two um, students that came from that, everyone here knows the definition of drug abuse. I'm sure people have one or two things to say. All right? Am I right? Yes. So, um, but I'll still go into the, I'll still define some things for, for you. And even if, aside knowing definitions, there are still some steps you need to take. If you know anyone involved in drugs, there are steps that you need to take to ensure that that person comes out freely. Do you understand? To ensure that that person has um, um, a good life care. Because um, these days, we, uh, there are so many stories and so many things that we hear out there. But um, if you, if you want things, um, making up your mind and having it in your mind that yes, this thing, I will not do it. You have to be intentional about it. That this thing, I don't want it, that I will not do because of the um, after effects. You understand your future, you think of your future. You know you are not thinking of yourself. Think of your family, your parents. They sent you to school. You did not either end your bit or you now come out and be a drug with No, nobody wants that. Even you have yourself, you don't want it. And I'm sure your parents don't want uh, um, such also. Uh, okay, so, so firstly, So firstly, um, we define drugs. Drugs are defined as chemical substances other than food that affect the normal function of the body and mind when being taken or applied to the body. We have different routes of uh, administration of drugs. It might be through um, IV that intravenous and muscular. It can be through um, oral or topical that is when you apply to your body. Whichever means, whichever means you you um, you used to um, take in this drug, you affect your mind and your body. So affect you either negatively or positively. It depends on um, the reason or the of the main reason of using it. If you are using it according to a prescriber's um, according to a pres according to the way it's being prescribed, fine, it will work well for you positively. But if you are using it um, on your own way, as not prescribed by a medical practitioner. So that's when that's where um, drug abuse comes in. That is what So and also drug passes through the body and interferes with body neurotransmitters. That's the neurons in the brain, chemical neurons in the brain. It affects it. It affects your brain such that, um, like I said, it depends on which way you are using it. If you use it, pre being prescribed by a medical practitioner for the right purpose, it will have a positive.
And I gave them a hard credit lucky what it means. Locate your strength, understand your weakness, connect with people of greater strength, um, know your maker, and yearn for the things of God. I explained all that to them. I won't go into details because I just have five minutes. So, um, there's this particular boy. The principal went into the classes to scavenge and then pick out those very tough ones. There's a particular boy that was always frowning. He doesn't smile. They don't understand. They can't break him. But he came in for that session that day and he got broken to the glory of God. And then when he came to us during counseling, he did not speak up. But we scheduled another date with that school. We went back. And when we went back, the boy came to us. This time around, he was ready to talk. And he said to us that the day we came, we saved him. Because he ran into a gang. He just, just innocently, the school had a party. He was wearing a red shirt on his way home. And I just said to you that he's an only child. On his way home, he met some boys along the road and they accosted him and said, Why are you flagging a color? You're wearing red, you're flagging a color. Why are you flagging a color? Who are you? Identify yourself. You know all those slangs they use. And he got carried away, he wanted to feel like a big boy, he was laughing with them. Instead of him to focus and just keep going where he was going. So, to put the long story short, a connection started there, and they got hold of him. He became their friend. The parents, they were workaholic. Parents, please pay attention to your children. Mom goes in the morning, dad goes. They don't come back until very late in the night. He's all by himself throughout the day. So one particular day, they took him with them to Lekki. Imagine, maybe for example, you're living in Magodo. And then these people came in their car, took you all the way to Lekki, and this is one student. And they told him, just stay here, watch out for us. They were robbers. They used him as a watchdog. And after the whole operation, they would give him 50K. He was feeling like a big boy. What can he use such money to do? Nothing else than drugs. From there, he got initiated into cultism. Serious cultism. At the end of the day, you wanted a way out, but it was tough. So whatever you do now, it should be too bad for you to be running Elta Skelta for your life. So that day we came, he said he was supposed to go for an operation with his team. But he could not go because of the word he had. That is destined for greatness. That is his youth age is not a wastage, but an advantage. He said he did not go. And that day, the police napped all that thing. And now they are in jail. He would have been with them, brought him in jail. So they thought he sold them out, but he did not. The cultist group were now after him, his family. So whatever you do will affect you, affect your parents, affect your loved ones. You must be careful. The parents had to take him away, far away to, to the village, put him in another school. I don't know how they got the information. I don't know how Paul's is wrong, but they got the information and went after him. He was on the road for his life. As little as Esther's one. Feeling like a big boy, feeling fly. See where he landed in. We had to get a counseling tip and a pastor and um, people to help him, like the medical people, to get rid of the drugs in the system so it can be safe. It, it started affecting him mentally. All his friends, his mates were in school, but they were hiding him. He couldn't go to school. The parents had to be on the run. But thankfully to God, to take care is this. Whatever you do, whatever action you take, the time is your tomorrow. I'm sorry to say this. I wouldn't um, dancing or listening to that music because your role model too determines who you become. What you see, the 
determines what you look like. There are three pastors in our family. Hello, three pastors in our family. My dad can be likened to a pastor. See, even if you even if you come for me, even if you are a pastor's child, even if your father is a reverend doctor, a pastor, I don't want to go. Push up, God bless you. The devil can still see. It's why it's so much of carries glory that the devil wants to the devil wants to spoil it. So that is why this message is not for everybody. It's for people that have glory. If you know you have glory, yeah, it's okay. The fact, the theme of today is drug and hungry, but I call it drug and all destinies. Everybody here, you have destiny. Before you were born, before you were born, God had a divine purpose for your life, and the devil knows. The devil knew what I was going to become. The devil knew I was going to become the general. No. <laughs> the devil knew that I was going to depopulate the kingdom of darkness. And no. I will never forget the experience I had this Friday, this Sunday. How many of you know P. Daniel, Pastor Daniel, Olawande? I had a personal encounter with him. You know what it is for you to start? They call him Global Fire. They don't just call him Global Fire or anything. So, ever since that Sunday, I know this is my mantle. Ever since that Sunday, in fact, ever since last week, I was invited to Kenya British International College last week, last week, last week, Thursday. And I could see the move of God. That is when I knew that, okay, yes. God was not just making this movement a movement. God is turning this movement to a ministry. Coach Bibi was telling me something that she can see. She was talking from the realm of the spirit that I will, this ex factor movement will become a ministry. What by will draw, will depopulate the kingdom of darkness. See, the devil is a bastard. Over my whole life, I don't know about your life. I was in full dress for about 10 years. I started with Tramado. There are different studies of drug use. You have abstinence, you have experimentation. I started with experimentation. One lesson, as I go in my story, I want you. But I want to be driving some lessons. One lesson I want each parent here to learn is don't cage your children. My parents caged me. My mom was a teacher. I had a triangular movement in school in, in my life when I from, from when I was born to university. From home to school. My mom would drive me to school. She's a teacher in Kenya. From school to church. From church to, to the house. So I was looking forward to when I get to university, when I will get my freedom. All of you here, same thing. Thank you, God bless you for being honest. I love your spirit of honesty. Yeah, most of you are saying, uh, see, most of you want adult food. I don't want to say adult food as scam. Adult food don't be scam. But adult food come with a lot of responsibility. You need to build yourself to be able to. So that's why. How many of you are necessary? Okay. SS2, come. SS2. Once I'm from SS, please pay attention to me. If you're in junior school, pay attention to me. But also, especially when you're in senior school, pay attention because you're about to be lost to the world. When I got to university, I went, I went to a private university, one of the best private universities in Nigeria. I would try and compose myself not to cry. Today, I will not cry. I will not cry. Peer pressure is what makes most of you do the things that you don't want to do. Because you say you want to be young. Because if my brother please come, I like to be using what is your name, sir? Tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. Tell me I see the spirit is one. Tell me, tell me. What's the difference? He are very good. <laughs> now. Just imagine, tell me, has a group of five friends. And then, those is five friends. 
they have their, 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 their voice, they are giving their friends, you understand? And you, what you have been taught from your own house, from your home, and what you are taught in school is, it's not good to keep boyfriend and girlfriend. I'm using that as an example. But because of you see your friends are doing it, you want to do because you, you don't want to you want to you want to go and sit down. You don't, God bless you, you don't want to be left out. So you join them. And look, you see, everybody has their own destiny. And look, when they get back to tell me, when they get back to what they they did not get back to tell me. We don't share the same umbilical cord, you know. We carry we carry different destinies. So I pity you. In fact, I do not pity you. If out of peer pressure you do things that you are not meant to do, anything that you are not proud of, can come outside and say that I'm doing this thing. Stop it. I always started with Tramado. Ordinary Tramado. 100 milligram. How many you know? 100 milligram. I started with one. 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 Graduated with two. 200. You now became a part of me that I now graduated to. You know, at that time, they are not banned from Ado. That's I'm talking about 2016, 2015. They are not banned from Ado. That time, started of Tramado was 200 or 150. So, as, a, as at a point, I used to take one subject a day. That's it, man. I said, take this in Boston. Then we will push you. See, uh, that is why this Gen Z, hey, God. This, that is why. I am a man of God with the touch of violence. Because in this, the devil is not happy with this generation. That is why you see a lot of, you see a lot of abnormalities becoming normal. That's why you hear on colors, on colors, on colors, on colors. What is that? <laughs> Laugh it out. But listen. Abnormality is not the normality. You cannot come out boldly and say that you are a virgin. What is that? They will look down and say that. Uh, This Gen Z, all of you here, ha! And I don't blame. It is, it is, it is all of that place. That is why all these things I'm saying. If I say all these testimony, if I say all these things, all these things, all these things, going back to God. Let me continue with my story. From Tramador, that was the starting Tramador. I can't get it to the red one. Two hundred and twenty-five milligram. That red one. I should take two. What is two? I should take five. Let me five. Five. 225. 225 plus 225 is what? 500 milligram. That is 1,000 milligram plus. Do the mathematics yourself. I'm sorry, I can't see. I'm not using it. I don't need that for anything. <laughs> From there, I got so addicted. That's when government had banned it. It now became very expensive. As I traveled on, I started smoking. Which kind of smoke have I not smoked? Except Kolos, because Kolos was not raising a, a, a back then. I think the highest the skunk as a back then was loud. That time, Kel, that time in the university, that time in the university, because the private university now, and you know that those kind of things are who will hide who will inside the toilet. I can remember a time, hey Jesus, I can remember a time from 12. See what we, see what we did. Loud, we bought a bag of loud. Refno, we bought two packets of refno. We broke the refno into pieces. We now tied, uh, we now tied the loud, like, I think like 10. So we mix it loud with refno. We went to the rooftop because at that time we stayed in you know you know all these private universities just like uh, secondary school where you cannot go, you cannot go out and then you are being monitored. So we went around to twelve in the midnight. We smoked to five. Yeah. I'm telling you. At the point, we start. Like that. Like that. The chain. What made me get attracted to it is because I was seeing those people that were taking drugs, I was seeing them and they were big boys. They say, Yo, what is big boy? You will not give your life to Christ. You will not, they will not be calling you spirit cocoa. And you will never call you spirit cocoa. See, if 
if I had known and I started doing spirit cocoa, I would not be where I would not be where I am today. I will not be in Nigeria. Because I know what I carry. Hello. My life was so miserable that even the physical possessions I had, I sold. My phone, I sold. I sold things in the house, my parents' properties. I sold it like pot. You know all these uh, people that say, uh, I don't condemn, I don't condemn, I don't condemn. I almost sold all the pots in your house. Anywhere I go to, I will steal. Because, see, addiction, drug addiction is a beast. A beast does not become a beast. A beast starts from a puppy. It's just like a dog. A dog does not become a dog. A dog becomes a puppy. And what makes the puppy grow? What makes the puppy grow? What makes the puppy grow? Food. So what's food sell drug addiction? That beast called drug addiction. It's when you start taking it. That's what's growing. That's what's growing. That's what you have control abuse. That's what control abuse you now graduates towards drug what? addiction. That drug addiction is the beast. That is why. If I don't think, I was explaining to Mr. Ayo, I think it was last year. I was explaining, yes, last year. It was last year. You are in the system and the baby. Mr. Ayo, why are you also screaming at me like this? Nobody, nobody in my family. I refuse to cry, say. I remember the person that named me gave my name in ceremony. My parents, that time when they were still carrying me to. It got to a point. My parents did not know. Uh -huh. One thing I want every one of us, especially the adults that are standing here, teachers, you are career molders. Sorry, you are destiny molders of these children. Anything that happens to these children, you are not able for them. Aside their parents, most of their parents do not have their time. So now go. Should I round up? <laughs> I will not round up now. But the only three has to round up, please, sir. Come on, people, please. Because everybody has to take something now. Because like I said, everybody is having for some people who are sleeping, drinking, especially when the pharmacist was talking, something that you should listen. As I said in my own session now, I will not turn it to super story. I will turn it to, to preaching. Or maybe I blame my parents, but they maybe they make Christianity look old fashioned. Now, would you like to serve the God that I serve? Look at me for me. Would you like to serve the God that I serve? I'm being exposed for the kingdom of you. Over 10 years I was into drugs, my parents did not know until. Eight years after. Even when they found out in the university that hello, I'm going home with drug. My parents did not believe. When they said when I get home that they should do drug tests for me. My that when I now came home, my dad now called us. They said they are taking drug is it true? I said, ah, daddy, mommy, you trust me now. I mean, I know how to lie. You know, there are some of you, you guys are professional liars. You are professional liars. But today it comes to an end. I can't hear you, amen. Because some of you are not afraid of lie. And you know, if you are lying, you need all that lies to cover up the lie. That's why I call you professional. I used to be a professional liar, you know. So I could cover it up. My parents were so blind because of they loved me so much. I'm the only child of my parents to walk in that. I was watching something by Joshua Selman. Some of you here, especially if you are the only child, this one is for you. If you are the only child here, raise up your hand. See, see. God has. Come. I should that there's a reason why I am pointing to you. I'm using as a point of contact. See, the Lord is using you. The Lord is depending on you. The Lord is depending on you, so if you make any mistake, the family is gone. My mom, come and sit down. Tell me, it is well with you, Jesus. 
My mom almost committed suicide three times. My mom. That's so far over my head. Mr. Ayo, you know You know how they take my school fees. Going to, you know what it is going to kill them international college. Going to a private university only child. And then you come out, you are out to not see. Ah! Especially those of you that especially the rich kids, those are the ones that those are the ones that they deal with high drugs because they have the money. They have the money. I have friends that we used to take it. Two of them are dead now. And our school fees as I tell was more than half a million. I don't know why some parents are so gullible and so stupid. Sorry to use that word. A parent will transfer school fees to his or her child's account. I say, go and pay because you don't have time. I'm talking about some of my friends who they will now use almost half a million, more than half a million, to buy crack.
defeated by the world? Do they really have to listen to those who are negatively influencing, telling lies to those who pass by? But why? Why can't they tell themselves what is true? How can they when they don't know the truth? Just ask yourselves, must I? Should I? Why would I? Really, do I want to? But I won't. Not just because I don't want to, but because I am different. So I mustn't, I shouldn't, and I wouldn't want to because I am different. Thank you. I'm still looking at where I would start from. Mr. Kaido, please, I need your services. I want there to be a shout in this place. The band members to face. I'm just going to do this and I'll drop the mic. A lot has been said. A lot has been said. appreciate all of you. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your, your, your support, especially kudos to the GSS3 students who have uh, put up this program together with their amiable teacher, and that is our counselor, Counselor Omotumiwu Orija.